Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time passing through? Like, subscribe and share. I talk on a variety of topics. I like to think that whatever I talk about is helpful, you know, is informative. And um, yeah, it, you know, I run the gamut. I can talk about anything, really. Sometimes I talk about what people ask me to talk about. Sometimes I find things myself. Sometimes it's based off my own experience. And today um, it's based off my own experience. Um, so for all my subscribers, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your support and thank you for your letters and, you know, the, the lovely comments that you make. But yeah, um, the other day, I'm a type of person, I tend to, I don't buy a lot of clothes, but, well, it's relative really whether or not I buy a lot of clothes. But I do have a quick turnaround of clothes and what happens is, is if I buy a couple of pieces I put them in a charity bag a couple of older pieces put them in the charity bag so my house isn't kind of overloaded with new clothes and I do that kind of continuously so I have a place in my house where I just you know pile up clothes and then when they put the bag through the door I fill up the bag and off it goes. And my, my clothes are pretty decent, you know, they're not rubbish. So um, anyway, so what was happening was, is that um, I filled up a bag, put it outside, for quite, for, felt quite pleased with myself. And, you know, I'm helping people with cancer or whoever the course is for. And I feel as though, yes, I'm doing a good turn. Anyway, I've completed, I've filled up the bag. Normally they come around once a month or once every six weeks. Anyway, I filled up the bag. The next week I saw another bag. I thought, oh, well, it gives me an opportunity to kind of um, clear out, you know, some of these, the stuff that I'm not going to wear again. So I filled, put the bag, I put in a couple of shoes, um, and some brick and brack, you know, some other things that I felt I might not be using and somebody else might find useful. Put that outside. Then, the last time, it was like the third week straight, another bag came. And I'm like, they're getting really, really frequent. So I had a case that, you know, um, it wasn't rolling properly. So, and there was a wheel that was faulty on it. So I thought, well, it's a big bag. Let me put the, let me put the um, case in there. Let me put in there a pair of Ugg boots. I had the authentication certificate. But because I couldn't wear them in water, I thought they're not really functional. So I put them in the bag, put it outside. Then that was fine. Well, now, by the fourth week now, I'm getting peed off. Another bag is going through my letterbox. I'm like, no, 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 no. Something's not right here. Four consecutive weeks. You're putting a bag through my door. I said, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, you're getting greedy. I don't know if it's because the, the stuff I'm putting in the bags is quite decent, but I'm like, you're getting greedy. And the funny thing was is that I think I was off that morning. And as I was um, coming home... I saw the guy put the bag in my door. I saw him with the big pack of, you know, cancer bags or whatever you want to call them, charity bags. So I said, you're getting a bit greedy, aren't you? Anyway, he looks at me a bit funny and walked off. And I thought to myself, you know, four weeks in a stretch, that is four consecutive weeks. That is a bit much. And it made me feel a bit suspicious. I'll be honest with you. So what I did is that, you know, I said, I looked on the bag and um, I found an email address. Um, but I don't think I used that email address. Yes, I did use the email address on the bag. And so I wrote off and I didn't get no response. So that was after two weeks, not even an acknowledgement. So I'm like something dodgy going on here. So then I... Um, decided to go through the NSPCC and so I wrote to them I had their email address and I got an acknowledgement straight away and I just told them I said look you know I don't mind giving for charity and I don't mind giving you know stuff away but I want to make sure it goes to the right person this is what I put in to the right people the needy then um so I sent that off and meanwhile I started researching and you know for 
the the company that I was um, the company that I was concerned about, which happened to be Clothes Aid. So I went on I went on the internet and um, I found a couple of spam mail. So now I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, um, even though they have some they have a Clothes Aid that is authentic. They were talking about those, some other stuff. Not that there were scams, but there were scams going on regarding charity bags. Um, I don't think Close Aid was one of those, um, but I can't remember now. I'm going to put the link in because there was quite a few scams with the charity bags. And, you know, the charities are saying, you know, they're really losing a lot of money because they've got people... Um, just taking the bags or who have stolen the bags and putting them through and they're going and collect them and they're not going to the people who they're meant to. Instead, they're, go they're being sent to Europe, Europe and they're being sold on the side streets for a profit. So I started getting really concerned. And I'm telling you this because, you know, we do things on automatic pilot a lot of the time. When these bags come through our door, if you're like me and you just want to get rid of stuff, you put them in, but you put them in a bag. But you want to think that it is going to charity. You don't want to think that somebody's exploiting you or taking your stuff and making a profit off of it and selling it. Otherwise, you might as well sell it on eBay yourself and make money. So if you're like me, this is really important. Anyway, I got an I got a response from NSPCC and they said they're going to check to see whether Clothes Aid was delivering in my area during that time. So I felt a bit better that I'd got an acknowledgement and it was really quick. And I think the next day I got a response to say Clothes Aid had been um, in that area. They had two rounds or two people doing them and maybe the people crossed over and um, happened to deliver uh, more than frequently than they should have done. I mean, on the one hand, I was quite relieved that, OK, it is um, authentic that they are um, delivering and it probably is going to them. But on the other hand, it did made me think. I mean, it never occurred to me that... Um, filling charity bags, people would exploit that. So it's good just to be aware. So the reason why I'm letting you know this is just to be aware that when you do um, decide to give to charity, just bear in mind, look at the bag, um, check it out online, put the name and because they've got what their bags are supposed to look like. And, you know, when I checked the clothes aid bag, it wasn't the same as the one that was on the website. But then NSPCC said they've changed their um, their bags. So I don't know. It's just made me wary. And I think I'm not going to put anything in any bags anymore. I'll take them to the charity shop myself. And I'll feel much more comfortable doing that. I'm, I know some people, they can't get out. And so, you know, this is the way. But, you know, it's just good to um, be aware at least. So I hope this has been helpful. I'm just going to read quickly um, so you've got all your information. Um, let me see. Um, both the NSPCC and the charity bag collection agency, Clothes Aid, have written separately to the fundraising regulator calling for an investigation into unlicensed charity bag collections. Following a report by BBC Radio, Five Live investigates into the issue. Clothes Aid is a company which distributes and then collects charity clothes bags door to door and then sells them on for a profit, a percentage of which goes back to its charity partners. Close Aid has worked with the NSPCC since 2009. See, I didn't know that they um, take your stuff and then sell it. You know, I didn't, you know, what, and then they give the charity a percentage. They won't be getting any more of my clothes. I'll just take it to wherever. Commercial companies are required to have a local authority license before collecting bags of clothes on behalf of charities. But on Five Live, Michael L Lomotti, 
head of collection promotion at Close Aid, said that over 60% of charity bag collections were being done by unlicensed and unregulated agencies. He said that this was costing charities hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds in funds a year. Lomity also said that some unlicensed collection agencies were giving back less than 10p in every pound on the profits from the clothes they collected and sold on. In a letter to the fundraising regulator, Clothes Aid also said that there is a measure of public disquiet and donor fatigue around charity bag collections, which it blamed on market saturation in the sector due to what is called a glut of unlicensed collections and so-called bogus collectors. It called on the regulator to conduct an investigation on, into the issue, following which it might helpfully recommend, helpfully, hopefully, let me read that bit again. It called on the regulator to conduct an investigation into the issue, following which it might helpfully recommend, to the, to the Charity Commission. Department for Culture, Media and Sport Department for Communications, for Communities and Local Government, the Local Government Association and Association of Police and Crime Commissioners that they collectively, together with the fundraising regulator, negotiate and agree a memorandum of understanding to the police, the issue, to police the issue further. God, that was, that was a mouthful. Anyway, Nigel Spencer, Director of Fundraising at the NSPCC, also wrote to the regulator, backing its charity bag collection partner. A spokesman for the charity said the clothes aid work allow people to support causes they believe in without having to make a monetary donation and said that unlicensed collectors not only damage the trust of those who donate clothing but also have a very real impact on the much needed funds received by charities. A matter for the police and local authorities? It is fraud or theft. Actions like this need to be followed up by those with the powers to do so. If charities and their appointed agents are not involved, this is less likely to be a behaviour breach of the Code of Fundraising Practice. Properties that display a sign that says charity bank, bags and junk mail should not be delivered here, and yet they were delivering to those houses as well. So, yeah, it is supposed to be quite a big thing. I mean, like I said, I was doing it you know, on automatic pilot, put fill up a bag. If it comes once a month, fill up a bag and it goes. But I, the only reason um, it triggered some suspicion is because it was happening so frequently. But like I said, NSPCC said they're legit. Those collections were legit. I still think um, one bag a week is too much. And yes, it is like it gives you donor fatigue. And it's very, very weird that since I um, emailed them, I haven't had no bags. And it's not like I said, don't put any more bags through my door. But I haven't had any bags since. So, um, but I am going to be very sceptical in the future. And yeah, just, just be a little wary. Okay, and that's all for now. Bye-bye.